because I was craving something else. And as an adult and becoming a naturopath and then having my clinic, I saw, oh man, I, I'm having some other issues here that is causing me to reach for that quick sugar fix. So stress factors that will cause the sugar craving to be worse is going to bed late. So many people go to bed 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning and that really causes ir irregularity in your circadian rhythm. So you need to understand that going to bed that late is really not a good thing. And so many people say, well, I'm a night owl and I need to, um, you know, do all these different things and I can't sleep if I go lay in bed. Well, I understand that there are people who definitely go to bed later than, than that and than others. And that's okay. If, if you're not having any cravings, any issues with your weight, any disease issues, any chronic pain, right? So pay attention to that. And how would you change that? It's just a matter of going to bed a little bit earlier than normal and just work on that. Other stress factors would be eating irregular meals. So many people are on this quick grab and go kind of schedule, which is horrible for your, for your program, for your health overall. Eating three meals a day at the same time every day, it's that simple people. It really does make that much a difference because again, if you don't, your body never knows and never is in that mode of digestion. And so if you're eating irregular meals, your body is like, wow, I'm not sure when the food is going to come. And then when it comes, it's like, okay, I got to digest this food real quick. And your body likes habit. So good habits makes a strong body, which means that your weight will stabilize and be where it should be. So it really makes that much difference. So again, a lot of people go to bed late and they get up in the morning, don't like to have breakfast. I get that. We're going to talk about some things that you can do for that. And, I, and the reason I emphasize that, because I have a daughter, I have three children and my middle uh, or my youngest is like that. And my middle and my oldest children uh, tend to go to bed a little earlier and get up. But she really has struggled with uh, going to bed late and eating irregular meals. But she's learned, she's now 28, she's learned to be more consistent. And as she is more consistent, she is really reaping the benefits from that. So it's been good. Um, okay, lack of exercise, of course, um, that is a, a type of stress factor because exercise gets rid of the issues that we're going through day to day and helps to get, so I'm not talking about exercise just for the form of movement, but to release some of the issues that we are going through emotionally day to day. So just walking is great because it's a time where you could just let go of some of those stresses in your life. And then not enough R&R time. So rest and relaxation time is very, very important. And when you're not having enough of that, your body then is in a stress mode and then it causes a lot of other problems in an imbalance, right? Okay, so caused by, all right? so what what causes these emotional stress factors well work and financial worries um, having a new move a new job death in the family trauma like a car accident some kind of injury those are the big big ones there's a long list but those are the big ones right and then the biggest factors really though are the emotional ones right so those other ones are the physical things that happen or, or just life circumstances things happen it's when they build up build up build up and then you just can't take it anymore and you keep keep reaching for that sugar. So the biggest factors though, really, is if you have an unhappy relationship. Now, when I had my clinic and I had people come in to my clinic and, you know, they were frustrated because they didn't have a happy marriage and they had um, family, children that were um, causing problems in the family or they had just, you know, everybody has family issues or relationship issues with their marriage. And it just is, I mean, that's human nature, right? Well, when it gets to, again, where you're really, really unhappy and not taking care of yourself, it will cause imbalance in your body. And that's when you start using food as an emotional release because you're not really going to the deep root of what's happening. So that's a big factor. Another one is where you're really, really dissatisfied with your work. You know, you're spending, you know, eight hours a day at least working at your job and you're just not happy. You do it because you have to pay bills, but when you're really, really dissatisfied, it causes an imbalance. You know, and there's lots of different things you could do
to change that. I'm just saying these are the factors that you need to be aware of. So, you know, we're, I'm going to give you practical tools and, and strategies and tips tonight uh, of what you can do, but you have to be aware that these need to be addressed as well. So the other one that's a huge factor is unresolved emotional issues. So let's say you got somebody that you in a relationship with and they made you angry. That's typical, right? But when you hold on to that anger, and then you notice it comes out in other aspects of your life on people who don't deserve it or just in strange situ you know you're you're at the grocery store and you're getting mad because you're on the checkout line too long because the guy's taking too long to check out well that's normal right it's normal and but yet you get really really angry okay that means not that you're angry because of that particular situation but other things that have not been resolved in your life same goes for bitterness grief, shame, fear, you know, the list goes on. When there's unresolved emotional issues, I encourage you, my friends, highly encourage you, go find somebody to coach you through it, whether it's a therapist, whether it's a life coach, whether it's somebody at church, a minister, pastor, elder, somebody you respect. I've done it all. I went through all this, um, and you'll hear more about my story in a bit, but I... I went looking for the help because I didn't like feeling angry and bitter. That Those were my big issues. And then I had fear as well. I probably had all these. Now that I look at the list, I had them all. Anger, bitterness, grief, shame, fear, and then some. And I was in my early 30s. So it definitely is something that you need to look at and understand that um, if you don't resolve it, you're going to spend a lot of time and a lot of money on food and supplements. But if you deal with the root issues, guess what? It gets resolved. Here are the biggest symptoms what happens when you don't resolve it. Weight gain, which is what this training is all about, right? Lots and lots of weight gain comes on, you get aches and pains, diarrhea and constipation, dizziness, chest pain, rapid heartbeat. You know, you're worried about something and, and the anxiety starts building up and you got that rapid heartbeat going on. Loss of sex drive really affects relationships. That's that becomes a big mess. Frequent colds, your immune system goes down memory problems, short-term, long-term starts to, to come in. We did a training about dementia and Alzheimer's about that. And then you start eating more. And then the, the, the other things come in, the anxiety, depression, moodiness, irritability, feeling of overwhelmed or feeling lonely. Okay. And then all these things are combined and cause problems in your, in, again, your body where you're craving the sugar. So it just becomes like a roller coaster. So what in the world do you do? All right, do, and we're gonna talk about the weight, and I understand we we're, we're wanna talk about that, but I want to make sure that you understand also, it's not just about the weight, it's your overall health, okay? We don't want all those other symptoms that we just talked about. So my three-step formula, which I teach, um, I will teach this from now till forever, is to rebuild your body's immune system. You want to release the toxins and you want to rebalance your body, okay? And that's emotionally, mentally, spiritually, okay? That's really what it comes down to. So we are going to rebuild uh, by talking about the foods, the right foods, and, and how to get it into you and what you could do. And then um, we're going to talk about releasing the toxins a little bit, and then what can you do to rebalance. So just as an overview, overview, because I teach this all the time, but understand that take these three words, rebuild, release, rebalance, Put them up on your fridge, put them on your mirror, and you say, okay, every single day, what do I need to do to rebuild my body? Because when you rebuild and your system gets stronger, especially your immune system, uh, again, the fat goes. It just says, hey, I don't need to stay around. Um, the fat is there to protect you. It is there as a survival mechanism, and yet it also stores toxins. So when you rebuild your body and your immune system gets so strong, then the toxins are released, the fat goes, you feel better. That's how it works. That's basic A and P, basic anatomy and physiology. Um, then releasing the toxins, um, when you do that, we're going to talk about different ways that can be done. Again, what happens is when the toxins are released, the fat just doesn't have a reason to stay. All right. I, I mean, I really don't focus on, I really don't focus on um, weight issues. Uh, weight loss has never been my primary uh, target when uh, I, I teach either whether it's my clinic or in webinars, whatever. You, this is like a very rare training, but you understand 
it's because I know that I know that I know from all the years of experience and working with thousands of people that when you know how to release the toxins, the weight comes off. And I'll, and I'll show you what we could do about that. And then rebalancing your emotions as we talked about, right? All right. So let's talk about specifically the tips and tactics for breaking your sugar habit. What are you going to do? We've got eight of them that I'm going to share with you. So first off, you're going to eat low sugar foods all day long. Okay, so that's like a no-brainer. Well, what is low sugar foods? Okay, it, it means, you know, the fruits are an issue. So many times, um, picking on my mom who's 81, she loves to have her apples and she loves to have bananas and grapes. And I'm like, um, mom, I think, and she's, and she's struggling with weight. Like she's now, she's five foot two, 142 pounds. Not really bad. Uh, but she's worried. She's always been like 130, 135, and she's starting to get that belly fat. And she keeps calling me every week, literally. What else can I do? Give me something else I could do. So I, I did, and, and I have helped her through that. And so she says, oh, I lost two pounds. I feel better already. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> so keep calm, mom. But the biggest thing is that fruit, right? So she was eating, She to instead of grabbing a cookie, she thought she was doing really good by eating a bunch of grapes. Well, grapes are very, very high in sugar. And then, and then I told her that. And she said, well, what about banana? Because it's high in potassium. I'm like, yes, but again, it's high sugar fruit. So the best thing to do is the green smoothies. And this is what I told my mom as well is, get a um, little almond milk and and she did she changed it over and she is like I, you know I like this almond milk it doesn't taste that bad the vanilla flavor is great I was like great I'm happy mom I'm, I'm so so glad that you're doing this and so then she would do that and then she would get some green powder and you know some of you will ask me which one and we're going to relaunch uh, a green powder at the end of this month and I will share that with you but for now just get whatever green powder that you have uh, in the health food store that looks good, that has a lot of spirulina in it. And then, and then just mix it up in the, in the, uh, almond milk in a blender and that's it. That's simple. And drink it at least two to three times a day. Now, the reason you drink it throughout the day, because your blood sugar will take roller coaster dips. And when that roller coaster goes down, okay, imagine the roller coaster going down, uh, that is when your blood sugar goes down and you're craving something and, and you start maybe feeling a little bit lightheaded, maybe you get a little bit irritable, maybe you get a little moody, maybe you get a headache, okay? And you know you should reach for something. You should like have a real meal, but you don't have time because you're working, you're running to pick up the kids, you gotta go get your mother, you gotta go take care of your husband, your wife, you know, whatever the reason, you just don't have the time. So that's when it's important to go ahead and have a green smoothie and have it in a jar, put it in your thermos, shake it up and drink that down. It's, it's a huge help. Uh, the number two, two tip is to make sure that you hydrate yourself, right? So when you are, um, when you are going through your breaking your sugar habit, you want to make sure that you're getting enough liquid and you know, people are always like, yeah, I drink a lot of water. Well, um, make sure that your urine is not dark yellow and that your urine is a light or pale yellow. Okay. So that's very important, it, you know, and you could do X amount of water. Um, I know there's different formulas out there, but I've just found watch the color of your urine and then you know that you're really getting hydrated enough. Now, the number three tip is using stevia. Stevia is, is when you, when you want something sweet, stevia is a plant with sweet leaves and they actually now use the root as well. It's very low carbohydrate, low glycemic sugar that doesn't um, cause any problems in case you have maybe uh, candida issues or maybe you have fungus issues. Um, stevia definitely doesn't add to that. You could add, it's very, it's very sweet. It's uh, one, one drop of stevia, liquid stevia is equal to 600 um, teaspoons of sugar. Wow, that's like a lot, right? So it's a one to 600 ratio. So it's got a very unique flavor. So when you think, oh, I'm going to have something different than sugar and I'm going to have um, something that is good for me and then you taste it, it's like, oh, I don't know if I could do this. Yeah, <laughs> because it is, it's a very different flavor and I understand that. But if you mix it, now here's, here's a, a simple sweet drink recipe is you add 
a drop or two of stevia. You could get liquid or you could get a powder. And then you add um, it to water and then you add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. This is what I put my mom on because she didn't didn't like the, just the straight apple cider vinegar. So add a little bit of stevia and then the apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon to water. And you drink that down, bam. You're just like, wow, that's like something different, something good and you feel good. And, and the apple cider vinegar is helping as well. All right, so more solutions. Eat sour and fermented foods. This is really the trick of the trade. When you, when you crave sugar, you hit it with the opposite. You eat sour and fermented food like sauerkraut, like kimchi, uh, foods that give you a blast of probiotics and nutrients will cut that sugar craving. Now, when you are going to the health food store, make sure you look for unpasteurized sauerkraut um, or make sure that you don't have um, anything that uh, is conventional, right? So uh, very easy to do. And of course, lemons are simple. I, I teach that all the time. You take a fresh lemon, you put it in your quart of water and you drink that down all throughout the day sour fermented foods throughout the day will help. T tip number four is take probiotics. So when your gut bacteria is out of balance, okay, because of the chemicals, because of poor food choices, because of stress, we crave sugar. And probiotics, of course, helps to replenish your intestinal flora and restore the balance in your gut system. So they help tip the scale back towards good bacteria and away from the bad, like the fungus and yeast. So take about um, two capsules, two in the morning on an empty stomach, two in the evening uh, on an empty stomach. And that's where you, that's where I would encourage you to start because that um, will start getting the, the, the healthy bacteria. Now, which kind and how much? Um, again, the variety is the, the important. I don't, I don't uh, promote any one particular brand, but get a probiotic that has a variety in there that will make a huge difference. And then tip number five is eat more fiber. Okay. So fruit, yes, but high fiber fruit, right? So that would be like a sour apple would be great. Um, berries are fantastic. So your raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, strawberries are great. Uh, that's about it. Not too much on the other fruits, uh, unless it has high fiber, maybe some papaya or mango is good. Um, but not, not too heavy, just the ones that are high in fiber. And then psyllium. Psyllium is an herb that has been around forever. And um, you could take a teaspoon of that, mix it in water. And what fiber does, it slows those, the, the, when you go on a roller coaster, we're back on the roller coaster, and your blood sugar goes down, and then it comes up, right? So when it comes up because you just ate or because um, you had too much fruit or whatever you had, um, you take psyllium and that slows it down and stabilizes your blood sugar so you don't have cravings later, right? So you're having sugar, what, doesn't matter what kind, and you're going to do go down, you're going to come up, but the psyllium, the fiber will help to actually stabilize it. We'll talk more about some other things you can do to stabilize it. So some more solutions. Tip number six is eat quinoa. I don't really recommend eating, well, I never recommend eating pasta. Pasta is like a big no-no because it's very hard to um, to get into your system, break it down without causing a blood sugar spike. So pasta is no, and brown rice and all that, they're okay and they're better. But out of all the grains out there, I highly recommend quinoa. Quinoa is it's easy to use. It's got a nice flavor to it. Uh, you could cook it up in 20 minutes and you could add it to your vegetables and all that stuff and it's great. So quinoa is the best grain for helping to crave your sugar cravings. And then tip number seven is eating raw nuts. Now, raw nuts, uh, you have to be, of course, you know, be aware that just a handful is all you need. So almonds, Brazil nuts, walnuts, pecans, just a little bit is fine. You don't want to go uh, with, uh, I had a client one time who she, uh, again, was trying to lose weight on, and she was working out, working out, but she wasn't losing it and she was getting frustrated and she had that belly fat and so we went through her diet again she admitted that she had been having because she knew raw nuts were good well she was having like almost a pound a day she was having a tremendous amount and so we had to cut that back to just a handful and that was fine tip number eight is add smoothie boost so remember i was telling you about having the green powder and with the almond milk well you could also add a teaspoon of chia seeds those are great uh, maybe uh, coconut oil. It's a natural fat that will help to satisfy you. And just one tablespoon is all you need. 
or um, well we mentioned the green powder with spirulina and then ground flaxseed having ground flaxseed that is fresh it's got the fiber in there it's got the omega-3 6 and 9s is fantastic or apple pectin one tablespoon of apple pectin that's the one that's my go-to I like apple pectin I like the fiber I like the taste it gives it a, a nice flavor to my smoothie and it just all helps to uh, eliminate that sugar craving so any one of those not all of them um, but just you know if you're going to do uh, a boost go ahead and just add one and we'll go from there step number two is your uh, detox menu plan overview so I have talked a lot about uh, detox menu plans and we're going to just do an overview of what you need to do to help you lose lose that belly fat feel good and make sure that you're uh, on the right track so first things first is add 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 I love to add food and not take away so adding food is very important uh, your veggies your fruits your proteins are all great so let's break it down and get into it so breakfast breakfast is um, where you're you got some choices so these are the choices that I recommend you could have some fresh berries your raspberries your blueberries your black your blackberries your strawberries right all those can be done that's normally what I have I have that in a green smoothie that is my go-to and uh, yes I do have um, weight issues if I'm not careful I had uh, emailed you guys to let you know a little bit that I had at one point been a size 14 uh, pant size when I was working my clinic and I was in my 30s and I've always been an athlete I've always been very very thin and the the weight was in my belly and it was so frustrating so I um, was really like looking and trying to figure out what the issue was it was a gut issue it was a, a gallstone issue and sure enough yeah I was stressed out I was working 70 80 hours a week at the clinic uh, trying to save the world or at least my part of the world and ended up um, having that that weight on my in my stomach mostly and it was uh, frustrating so the stress was an issue so I had to learn to deal with the stress which I did and then I dealt with emotions issues I had had a very horrible divorce so I went to get some counseling I did therapy I read books I went to support groups I did whatever it took to get rid of that which I did and then also I, I made some changes right I made some diet and lifestyle changes and then I went through menopause uh, pretty early actually I went through menopause in my 40s uh, I believe it was the trauma of everything I had been going through in the in the last few years so I had uh, early menopause in my 40s and said okay now I, I I look at food and I gain weight I look at food and I gain weight and I'm like this is insane like I've never had a weight issue in my whole life and so I had friends who were my associates and I said all oh, right what this was back before the hormone issue was really as prevalent this was um, quite a while ago and so I, I sat down with them and came up with a game plan and the game plan is to make sure that just exactly what I'm teaching you I practice and it works and so now my weight is stabilized I'm five foot seven 130 pounds and not skinny winny but certainly no weight issues either my stomach is flat feels great not 100 percent flat but I feel good and so this works it works for me and it works for everybody else that I I teach so it all makes sense right you know you, you don't want to go crazy diet stuff you you want you want a program that's going to get you where you need to go and not have to worry about um, all the the craziness of diets you know that doesn't work I never did diets myself I just knew that I knew that the emotions and the changes and the trauma that I've been through were causing the issue so I hope you're getting that message loud and clear that's that's the message I want for you guys all right so berries we said um, and having a green smoothie um, that would be almond milk and a tablespoon or a scoop of the green green smoothie and then a bowl full of berries that's first first up and then the next um, bre breakfast that I have a couple times a week and I put my people on are eggs 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 and then having a fresh pineapple is great um, you could also have it with fresh berries um, you can have it with Ezekiel toast but again I, you know when when you look at food and you gain weight you're like oh, okay carbs have to be smart carbs and carbs that are not going to put on weight and cause problems right and and so belly fat is usually an issue that carbs are an issue that has to be dealt with on some level so that's why I say do eggs and pineapple 
which is a type of carbohydrate actually, but it's not a heavy carb like um, having a whole grain piece of toast even, okay? So that would be a great combo. Um, green apples and nut butter, that's a, a very nice satisfying one, especially when it cools down and it starts getting um, cold outside and you want something a little bit more warming. The, the natural fats in the nut butter are good. So almond butter, I don't recommend peanut butter because all the issues with peanut butter, but almond butter is great, uh, cashew butter is great, tahini, you know, all those are great and you could you could go ahead and do that. All right, um, lunch would be steamed veggies and fish, chicken, and quinoa is a nice, nice lunch. It's easy to do, takes just a, um, a few minutes to put together. So any kind of steamed veggies, any kind, broccoli, asparagus, um, uh, any of your greens, your collard greens, your, um, your Swiss chard, that kind of stuff. And then having uh, wild caught fish and then having organic chicken and then making up your quinoa, that's a nice meal uh, for lunch. And then veg or veggie soup and sweet potatoes. Um, again, you know, you could just, it's, veggie soups are easy to make ahead of time. You put it in a jar, you eat it, and bam, there you are. And then if you need the carbs, I, I'm a high carb person. I love, love, love bread. I'm Eastern European woman. I love my bread, but I can't eat it because I put on weight when I eat it, right? So I'm looking for alternatives all the time. And this whole gluten-free thing is not helpful because that's a lot of rice and it's a lot of potato flour, which puts on weight. So sweet potatoes are, are pretty good because it has fiber in there, but even like having a veggie soup and maybe adding little beans to it. Um, in, the, in the summer, you know, I was just thinking about it as I'm looking at this, in the summer, what I do is I, I'll take um, like a half a can of beans and I'll add whatever vegetables are, are popular. So in the summertime, what I'll do is I'll add anything from radishes, tomatoes, cucumbers, to um, maybe little bits of asparagus, chop up a little broccoli, whatever's around and I just happen to feel like having. And then I put a little bit of uh, olive oil and because I love olive oil, uh, you could do coconut as well with a little balsamic vinegar. Oh my goodness, that's yum. That's really good. And it's satisfying. And that's what you want. You want to be satisfied so it's going to last you until your next meal. Another one is having squash, pumpkin, sweet potatoes, and steamed veggies. So again, depending on what time of year you're listening to this, um, in the summertime, squash and pumpkin are not as common, but then you could add zucchini. So zucchini and steamed vegetables as a base is great. Uh, dinner is ditto. So here's the deal. A lot of people at lunchtime want to have a salad. Um, when you are looking to lose weight, you want things that are nourishing and nurturing and you want things, you want to eat food that feels good and is not hard to digest. So having a um, salad is very hard to digest and very hard to break down. And I don't really recommend it. I actually recommend more the steamed veggies of some kind on a bed of quinoa or sweet potato or in soup, something like that. It is a th you you lose weight just eating that way i'm just saying it really really works doing the whole salad thing i don't know what happened to our culture that everything's surrounded by salad but it's it's much harder to break down and harder on your system so if you're going to do salad though caveat in other words it, here's here's a side note if at lunchtime you feel like oh, well that's all i have and i'm just going to make it and i'm just going to have it because it's quick then go ahead and have it at lunchtime, but then dinner time, have your steamed veggies with your quinoa or your soup or something like that. Because at the end of the day, you're tired. You've worked all day. You've been running around. So it's time to take care of yourself. And one way to do that is having food that's easy to digest and makes you feel good and helps you with your weight, right? So if you're going to do it, that's, that's the order of events. Okay, so let's get into the actual um, cleansing, right? So this is where we're talking about um, the pre-cleanse. So pre-cleanse is where you're going to add, so before your actual cleansing, you know, we're, we're talking about what can you do to get your, um, your weight under control. And that is going to be through doing a whole cleansing program. So giving you an overview uh, is that you do the pre-cleanse first and you're going to take uh, one to seven days to do that, depending on how much time you have, but for sure at least one day. And you're going to add more soups. You're going to add veggie juices. You're going to add some greens, mustard greens, arugula, Swiss chard, broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, you know, all those, all those vegetables are great. Um, so that's it, you, that's all you have to do. You're going to avoid your dairy foods, so 
no cheese, no yogurt, no milk. Um, you can have eggs, that's okay, it's not technically dairy, but you want to make sure that you have um, the, you, you've gotten rid of the dairy. And you're just eating light, okay, that's really what a, what a pre-cleanse is all about. And then also during your pre-cleanse, you make appointments. So getting some, uh, if you want to have somebody do colonics on you, colon hydrotherapy, chiropractor. But here's the one that has become very popular. I just did this the other day. Again, I do it about twice a month. It's got, getting a foot massage. I don't know where you are in the world, but I first got introduced to this when I was in Thailand. Like everybody gets foot massages, like all the locals. Now there it was very cheap. It was like $3 or $2. For a foot massage and and you get it for 15 minutes and and or to 30 minutes and they just did a great job here it's a little bit more expensive uh, but not that much i mean i i did a special um coupon for 20 dollars. it was great and it was a full hour and they massage not only your feet they actually do reflexology but the arms they um, do shoulders and back um, just a very nice light circulatory kind of massage and it feels fantastic. So I'd encourage you to do that during your pre-cleanse. Go explore, go find out if they're doing foot massages in your neck of the woods, right? Then this is also the time you buy your herbs for cleanses, you get your supplies, you just kind of get in that frame where you're ready to release the toxins that are putting on the weight. That's really what this is all about, getting yourself organized and getting yourself ready. And then it's the three-day diet detox. Now, Again, this is um, a, a program where it's very simple to do. It's very easy with the, the system that I came up with. It's really eating only berries like your strawberries, ras raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, or having green and or having green smoothies, veggie juices, herbal teas, miso soup. I'll tell you more details about it at the, at the end of the webinar, but I just want you to understand the three-day diet detox um, I have used it for people for all different kinds of situations. And then I was thinking, you know, this is like a great one for, we are like right now in, in the middle of the summer uh, here in the States and, and people are still like not feeling comfortable with their weight. So I'm like, you know what, let me tell you guys, this actually helps to lose weight very quickly, very safely, very effectively, because it's not hard to do it. I mean, you see, I mean, you eat berries. I mean, if you need to have a little vegetables and stuff, that's fine. But it's simple. That's all you do. For three days, you're going to eat some berries and have your green smoothies and, and the rest. And you're, you're feeling pretty good because there's, there's just not a lot that you need to do, but yet you're still getting some, some nourishment, some nutrients in. And that's it. And then after your cleanse, you're going to eat light. You're going to have some easily digested foods like steamed veggies, your veggie soup, your broths, wild caught fish, organic chicken, and you do that for a good um, three to seven days. That's it. And that's really the whole cleanse. But let's get into a little bit about the flat belly cleanse. This is what we're calling it. Um, that's where we focus on the colon cleanse and the liver cleanse. All right. So let's look at this a little bit more closely. The colon cleanse is really important when you are having belly fat issues. Very, very important that you cleanse your colon. I was a colon hydrotherapist for five years in my clinic, and there were so many people who had weight issues. I mean, Wisconsin, my goodness, it was cheesehead country. Everybody ate cheese and hamburgers and brats and horrible, horrible diets, right? And, and then you had winter where you didn't get out much and you weren't active, right? So I'm not picking on the Midwest. I loved it. I stayed there for 20 years, had three kids. It was great. But the Midwest has a lot of issues. and then I travel around and say, oh, it's not just the Midwest, it's all over the world. Everybody seems to be having um, problems with, with colon issues. So here's the deal, is when you cleanse your colon, you're actually releasing toxins because if you're eating food, and we all do, if you're eating food that is not uh, good for you, uh, fast food or, or something that is not good, it stays in your body and it stores in the, the the after effects, the residual stores in your fat, but it the uh, residual stays in your colon and you got six feet of colon. So when that colon starts getting too full, it starts pushing out on your belly. So think about it. If you take your hand right now and put it, put it so that the palm of your hand is over your belly button, over your navel. Okay, that area that if you if you then go side to side that area 
If you have belly there and it's a fat belly and it's not comfortable sitting there, it means your transverse colon is full up. Okay, I'm not going to say the word. You know what I'm talking about. It's full up uh, with stuff that doesn't belong in there, okay? And so that is what needs to be released. And that's not easy, okay? And if you don't, if you don't do a colon cleanse, right? If you're not having regular bowel movements, and even if you are having regular bowel movements, I know Dr. Oz really put this on the map, and I'm very grateful to him that he was teaching people. He says, you know, having a bowel movement every day is one thing, but having where you're really getting rid of your fecal matter that doesn't belong in there all throughout your colon, now that's another story. So he was really teaching in that, and it's true. You, if when you put your hand on your belly and it's tight in there, and especially the guys with their beer bellies, or and especially um, that that belly fat that's right there, it's really really hard to get out. And so I made it easy by showing you that hey, there's some herbs that you could use. There's therapies you've got to do coffee enemas and or colonics. Colon hydrotherapy is most effective, but you've got to do that. If you don't do that, you're gonna spend a ton of money on diets and you're going to waste time you're going to be frustrated and you're not going to lose the weight and you're going to be like i don't understand why i'm not losing the weight because here's the deal once the colon is cleaned out the other cool part is that your food gets to digest better because it's moving through your colon it doesn't get impacted you don't have to worry about constipation or diarrhea or none of that and you feel a whole lot better as you're cleaning out the whole colon so that's the cool part. The next one for a flat belly is your liver cleanse. Got to do liver cleanse. So first the colon, then the liver. You get um, the liver flush cocktail going. And most people know that it's olive oil and lemon juice, but this very harsh, you know, when you do it that way. That's how I was taught 35 years ago. So I came up with a much milder cocktail, much easier to do. And when you do that, that is amazing how your liver flushes out because I used to have gallstones as well and so when the liver gets to clean out and the gallstones get to start flushing out it's like wow you know the, the my liver is not so inflamed and the colon is cleaned out and you start looking in the mirror and it's like hey that that belly is going down so I encourage you guys you do the colon cleanse liver cleanse and you measure your belly because that's what I used to do to see like what is going on why do I keep having this belly fat and when I started doing the colon cleanse and liver cleanse years ago that's where I got results and that's where I'm encouraging you to understand liver cleanse herbal teas are great as well you could drink those every day and we'll get results to get that belly down now let's talk about the supplements the supplements are um, many that you could have I have 10 here for you so let's get into that so the first one um, you know, it's not around so much anymore, but it still works really well. Uh, Gemma Silvestre, which is a, um, why I like it, because it's an anti-diabetic um, for insulin issues. And so lots and lots of times when there's belly fat, there also comes a problem called diabetes or pre-diabetic conditions, right? So um, this here supplement is great to get that balanced out. Also, if you have other issues like, you know, the arthritis, um, you got the cravings, you know, you're, you're having problems with your sugar spikes up and down. So what it really is, it's an herb and it acts like a natural appetite suppressor because it has um, something called gymnemic, gym, say that three times real fast, gymnemic acid, especially in the leaves. So you take it, here's how you take it. You take it one hour before meals to reduce your sugar cravings and help your digestion. And it comes in like in capsule form, so you can drink it as a tea before meals, uh, as you can with all herbs, but it's just easier to take it as a capsule. And and what's cool about it is it works. It helps to stabilize your blood sugar, the sugar cravings go, and when the sugar cravings go and your blood sugar stabilizes, then guess what? Weight goes down. All right, number two is licorice. Licorice, not the candy I'm talking about. I'm talking about licorice, the herbal plant. It's very, very good for hypoglycemia. So that's low um, uh, 
that's high blood sugar. So hypo is high, hyperglycemia is low. So if your blood sugar is spiking all the time, then for sure licorice is great. It'll bring it down. It stimulates your adrenal glands and supports your endocrine system. And again, it helps sugar cravings. See, we keep coming back to that. You could drink it as a tea. It's, it's really actually pretty strong. Uh, so you might not uh, like it at the, as that, but you could also take it as a supplement. So either way, stevia, and we touched on that already, is an herb from South America. Many, many herbalists use it for blood sugar issues to balance it out. 600% um, sweeter than sugar, I mentioned that. So can be used in anything, can be used in tea, coffee, baking, yogurt, um, all kinds of stuff. So uh, just remember that you want to get pure stevia. Unfortunately, stevia now has dextrose in the label I've, I've seen. And dextrose is a form of sugar, white sugar. And why are they doing this? I don't know. Read your labels, people. Got to be careful. Ginseng is my go-to herb. I, I take it every day. I love ginseng. Like I am totally, in, as an herbalist, I am like totally in love with ginseng for myself and for my people. Why? Because um, the kind of ginseng I recommend is Panax ginseng. It increases your energy level, but it doesn't spike it. It, it actually helps your central nervous system and then lowers your blood sugar level. So it, it, just, it just helps your adrenals. It helps um, stabilize you. It doesn't give you on those spikes. It's so exciting that um, this herb works so well. So you need quite a bit though. I mean, you, you know, you could take it as a tea, uh, whatever, but you need to take um, like a lot of it. And so what I would recommend, just get the best ginseng you can for the money because it's, it's um, a little bit on the expensive side but it works they they now have it in little vials you could take one to three a day but again it works so well and you feel so good okay number five is cinnamon is sometimes we don't realize um when we need to stop eating late at night right those of you who like to eat at light late at night so maybe you know it's just you need you feel like you need a little bit of extra sweets whatever so cinnamon uh will help to again stabilize your blood sugar it it takes the sugar levels that are spiking or going down and stabilizes it because if you don't do that, then the sugar, of course, converts in your body in, and then stores in your fat cells, and that's the other problem. So taking three to six cinnamon capsules um, or mixing cinnamon with everything you eat is great. I mix it in the green smoothie. I put it on um, anything and everything that I could think of, and it just has a nice flavor to it, just straight up cinnamon. Number six is chromium picolinate. Again, this has been around like forever since Gymnema. It's a very popular supplement back in the day, and I don't know, it, it, it just has gone out of sync with, with the whole supplement world, but it works. So what is it? Chromium picolinate is a natural mineral that is found in meats and actually a whole bunch of stuff, carrots, potatoes, broccoli, grains, molasses, bruised yeast, eggs, just a whole bunch of stuff. And when it's in um, uh, paired up with something called acidic picolinate, it helps your body to absorb the mineral. So picolinate is produced when tryptophan is made. So that's, so it's really known as a byproduct of tryptophan. And if you know about tryptophan, that helps to relax and calm uh, your system. So as like I'm saying with all my remedies, it helps to reduce sugar cravings. All of them do that. So taking 200 to 400 micrograms of chromium, that's micrograms each day, um, even up to a thousand micrograms works. Again, spread it out, take it with your meals. Number seven is vitamin C. Insulin helps to, so vitamin C, lots and lots of things for immune system, right? But in this case, vitamin C, the insulin helps to transport vitamin C to your uh, body, into your blood cells. And when your insulin levels are reduced due to the help of vitamin C, it can help prevent those blood sugar spikes, right? And it gives, gives relief to your pancreas. Therefore, the weight goes down and stays down. So that's the cool part of vitamin C. So again, 500 to 1,000 milligrams at least once a day, um, I use, I use one with bioflavonoids because it has the root and hesperidin and it helps your immune system even better. All right, number eight is biotin. Studies have shown, biotin is a type of vitamin B, right? So it shows that when you add biotin to your daily regime with chromium picolinate, it improves blood sugar levels, um, even, if you have, even if you have spikes on there. So 
that's very cool. It gets your um, your body metabolized that way. So how much should you take? Um, 100 to 200 uh, milligrams, but really I would suggest mixing it in with your um, B vitamin supplement, like a multi B vitamin liquid supplement. Liquid is always better taking that a couple times a day. I put people on it three times a day, but I quickly take them down to two times a day because it just is too, um, it gives you too much energy, actually. <laughs> actually, it works very well when you're doing all the things that I recommend. All right, so vitamin E is another one. Um, vitamin E works very well to help um, with, um, actually, manganese, your mineral, which we're gonna talk about next. Uh, a natural vitamin E with about 1,000 IU taking that um, for antioxidant and to normalize the blood sugar is great. And then number 10 is manganese. So manganese is um, uh, one that is a mineral that um, it helps your uh, blood sugar again. But the thing with manganese is because the mineral is um, something that your, um, your hormones need to balance out because they need extra minerals to uh, function properly, stay balanced and all that, then manganese is great to do that. I don't necessarily take all these individually. The only one is ginseng I take individu individually or when I was looking to lose weight, I did the ginnemna and the chromium picolinate. The rest is good to mix in with a smoothie and that's what I always recommend is get a smoothie that has all these minerals and vitamins in there and then you're not stressed out about, oh my God, I have to go get these different things. I have to go and um, uh, buy all these supplements and it gets expensive. I'm telling you the shortcut of what to do. We always like shortcuts, right? That's what it's all about, okay? All right, so let's get into um, a little bit with the green powder supplement. So um, to make sure that you get the right one because you know, I, you see I've been emphasizing that. Um, the, the, the green powder, the best is a spirit, that it has spirulina as the first ingredient. 1500 milligrams minimum. So it has to have 1500 milligrams. If it doesn't, um, that's an issue. Then you're not getting the nutrients. Why spirulina is so great? Because it has the B vitamins. It had to B vitamins, including biotin, to help your, your body um, keep the energy level up and doesn't have the sugar spikes. And it also has tons of minerals. So it has the manganese, it has calcium, it has magnesium, it has many, many different minerals that will help your body to stabilize. And um, it's very high in vitamin A and vitamin C, vitamin E actually. So it's, I love spirulina, it's been around forever and it's just a great, um, great powder to have blue-green algae in your drinks and your smoothies. Chlorella is the other one, alfalfa grass, barley grass, wheat grass. They all have components in there, nutrients in there to give your body the nutrients to um, get rid of the poison. So remember what I said, get the nutrients in so that your body rebuilds itself and it can release the toxins and then rebalance. Remember the three R's is rebuild, release, rebalance, right? And this is one of the best ways to do that. So green powder, a scoop in almond milk or rice milk, three two to three times a day is great. And a lot of times people who have belly fat are always telling me, oh, I'm not really that hungry, I don't really eat that much. I'm like, yeah, because you're not getting good qualified superfoods into your system and so yeah you need to get you need to get good nutrients in your system throughout the day so your blood sugar stops doing that spike right very important all right so let's get into a question for you now that we've had the the main part of the training so if you could have the step-by-step -step guide to learn exactly what it takes to get your body cleansed of toxins that are making that ugly belly fat would you want that? Well, then listen closely, because if I could teach you exactly how to follow a proven system that does not include a diet plan, but a detox plan that gets the weight off easily and stays off, that's the big one, plus increases your energy and makes you feel like a million bucks, would you let me show you? So what this is, is I gave you an overview a little bit about the pre-cleanse program, um, the three-day detox intensive training, and the post cleanse program. And I just gave you an overview of that, but really just so you know, it's about eating foods, not just liquids. So it does include the berries and it does include eating um, some vegetables, um, does include eating some quinoa and you know, the things I was telling you today, right? 
It does include that. It's not like this deprivation restrictive program. It, it's also using three simple to do low cost natural therapies. So I mentioned one of them, which was uh, the coffee enema or the colonics, um, but there's just two more. Very simple to do, very low cost, not hard. It could be done at your home. Uh, you don't even have to go out to do them. And also relax time for your ultimate detox results. It's very, very important that you learn as you're detoxing and getting rid of the, the issues that are causing the belly fat that you need that downtime. So I teach you all about that as well. So what this is not, it's not another diet detox program just to lose a few pounds. This is really simply a proven system I've used over 25 years in my clinic. It is another way to take care of your weight and your health. This is what makes my program unique and this is what gives such good long-term results. And that is that my passion is to get you maximum results. Really, that's what I want for you, getting maximum results. So getting results, I want to get your weight off permanently. I want you to be like me and my other clients that I work with that you get it off, keep it off, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. I want you to stop worrying about your weight so you can feel good about yourself and know that you are empowering your health. See, I've figured out how to create a system that detoxes you and gets the weight off at the same time. I figured out the strategies and details on getting this information to tens of thousands of people so you could get the fastest and best results in the shortest time possible. And it's the 333 Detox. Some of you have heard about it, but not understanding that it's great for weight loss, great for your overall health, and solves a whole lot of issues from blood sugar issues to constipation to energy issues, whole bunch of issues. So I'm like, let me train you guys in a different way and show you how effective and powerful this 333 detox is. So what is it exactly? It's a step-by-step -step guide and how to do the actual 333 detox. So it's three days of pre-cleanse three days of the actual intensive detox, uh, and then three days of post cleanse. So it includes having menu planning for before and after. So you saw we touched on breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but I really get into, in the program, I really, really get into you know, breaking it down, like what are all your choices for breakfast, and what are all your choices for lunch, and what are your choices for dinner that really work to keep you feeling good, not worrying about uh, your weight, and making sure that you're cleansing at the same time. These are video trainings. Okay, so this is video. This is where I'm talking to you, and I go through the details step by step with you so you get it, and that includes the colon cleanse. I go into a lot of colon cleansing issues of what to do, how to do it, um, what do you do, what's the schedule like? What do you do when you first wake up in the morning until the time you go to bed? You know, what, what is that? And then what is the liver cleanse, and what does that entail, and what herbs do you have to take, and how do you do the liver flush? You know, I go into all those details. They're not long video trainings. I, I, not, nothing is over 30 minutes long. Most of them are much shorter than that, so you could learn it, and then you go do it. And that's really cool. You could learn it and do it. And then if you get stuck, I have unlimited email support for your specific challenges. So that's the gold here, right? Is when you're going through your cleansing and when you're going through like, okay, um, I have a goal that I want to feel better and I want to lose a certain amount of weight. Okay, then you're going to run into challenges. We all do. You might not feel good and you might have a headache that you're not sure about. You might not know where to get something. I give unlimited email support for you. Not a problem. I'm right there with you walking hand in hand, making sure you know exactly what needs to be done. So your results, you're going to lose that belly fat. An average person that I work with, they lose five to 10 pounds. Um, very, very easy to do. It's not hard. Um, and I'll show you exactly how to detox and cleanse your liver and colon, which is where that belly fat likes to hang on to. I think you got that message, right? That's where it is. And we need to get that colon and liver cleansed out. So it's almost magical when you see how easy it is to do and how little time it really takes to get such fast results. And it's really 